Hello everyone, today we unite from across the world with a singular mission to accelerate cancer research and uh, let's inspire each other, let's challenge each other. I'm Shushan Hosepian, from, uh, I'm a pediatric oncologist from Yulian Hematology and Oncology Center and uh, I'm very happy and pleased uh, to lead this session uh, with uh, two uh, renowned um, specialists, uh, Ricardo Garcia, we already met him, the CEO of uh, Oncoheroes uh, Biosciences, a wonderful person who uh, used his personal experience uh, and uh, put it into the action and uh, Ben Benjamin Reiner from Australia, from Children's Cancer Institute, who is a senior scientist in the Brain Tumors Group. I'm very happy to welcome you both. Hello. Hello, how are you? Thank you, Sushan. Uh, thank you for being here, and um, I'm very excited for this uh, opportunity for this Oncothon because this is uh, the unique and uh, first ever uh, initiative uh, to help children and raise funds. So um, today uh, I would like to speak uh, with both of you about a little bit about the, the uh, Oncoheroes Bioscience and also uh, about uh, the trial that uh, we are going to uh, launch after the Oncothon. So the first, my question is for Ricardo. Uh, can you share a little bit of uh, what was the inspiration behind launching the first ever biotech company, which is 100% dedicated to uh, pediatric uh, cancer research? Well, thank you. Thank you again for um, having us here today. Uh, well, the, the reason that, um, you know, made me decide to move forward and launched a company specialized on developing drugs for pediatric cancer was the lack of interest from the industry. So as you all know, my son was diagnosed with brain cancer, then um, everything was new to me in the start of build, uh, creating a foundation when I moved to the US for to save his life for treatment. And then everything started by creating a foundation and then I just realized about the needs of the pediatric cancer, the lack of uh, support from the industry, um, it was very, traumatic to me to learn also that there were a lot of um th there was a lack of interest um from uh, from the industry to support the early cancer because it was a it is a rare disease so uh after talking with a lot of um foundations and a lot of pediatric oncologists um a lot of uh, experts from academia uh partners and organizations um i just realized there was a lot of frustration uh, even though you know you think about the efforts that the community has been put for so many years to support research. Um, unfortunately, this, the few new drugs that were specifically approved for pediatric cancer is unfair. Um, so, and then I was wondering what is the problem? So what we could do? And I realized that the problem was mainly because, well, you need a company uh, at the end uh, of the tunnel to really uh, get the drug approved um, uh, to go through all the regulatory process and eventually you know, bring the, the drug into patients. And then when I was discussing with the pharma industry and I was asking them, well, why, why are you not interested in, in saving lives as kids with cancer? Well, the answer was clear to me. Um, they were more focused in bigger markets um, because of course, this is our private companies and we have to really cover a lot of costs. Um, and it's not justified uh, to invest so much money for such a small market because you know there's supposed to be no so big profits on that. So that was kind of the reason that I took me and to think about it. Well, and I guess because I'm a serial entrepreneur, I've been building companies from scratch on the IT sector. So I thought, well, if there is no one interested in taking the lead from the industry, then let's build a company. And then I was fortunate enough that I met uh, Chester Spadoni, which is my friend. Uh, I'm my co-founder, uh, my partner, and the person that has spent a lot of time in the last seven years since we decided to launch this project. Uh, just today, um, the audience will meet him uh, eventually during the Oncothon, but uh, he's also a dad. And unfortunately, he lost her daughter, Laura, because of cancer. And then we didn't know each other. Um, so he set up his own foundation in UK. He wanted to support with the cancer search. Uh, he did his best. Of course, he's a scientist. It's not like me. I'm the dumb in the team. So uh, he's the guy with the uh, with the minds and with the brains. And um, 
but he never ever created a company. Um, so he had to fill in and he came to the same conclusion as I did. Um, and another dad, uh, or was not really a dad, was a mom from another foundation in the US. She thought, okay, you guys need to meet each other because you, you both had this ambition. And um, he just really wanted eventually also to launch a biotech company. So uh, we were introduced to, to each other, and then there was a perfect match, you know, a serial entrepreneur, and then the, the scientist with more than 20 years' experience on the pharma industry. And here we are. That was a good combination, and I'm very excited um, to what we have today. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing that. Actually, it's a truly inspirational story that uh, you created a company only dedicated for pediatric cancer. We all know that uh, the medical cancer research, oncology research is very fast growing in medic medical oncology field, in adult oncology field, but, but for pediatrics, it takes too, too long, uh, many years for approvals and uh, regulatory uh, regulations and so on. So, um, yeah, uh, actually, uh, thank you for sharing your per per perspective and it's, uh, it's really inspirational. But uh, I also want to highlight uh, the challenges from uh, not uh, from the industry part, but also from the scientific part. So could you please share, uh, Benjamin, a little bit about the challenges that you face uh, in the scientific uh, part? Uh, well, I guess, I mean, Ricardo summed it up there. The pharmaceutical industry is not really interested in pediatrics. Um, we, we, I mean, the Children's Cancer Institute and the Zero program here have gone a long way in, in the, the ZERO program to actually identify molecular characteristics and what we're interested in particular is DMG and, and DIPGs, but other, other pediatric cancers, of course, um, and, and actually identifying the target, the market targets that we can actually, um, you know, treat uh, these, these cancers with, um, you know, the compounds we can treat. But getting the drugs um, from pharmaceutical industry is actually very difficult. Um, so I guess that's, that's the biggest challenge. Um, with DMG in particular, there's you know, DMD is so uh, different, each, each individual is different. Um, so actually finding uh, drugs to actually treat across the board is actually very difficult. And I think with, with the PLK1 inhibitors, that's one of the ones that pops out. Like when, when you look at through a, through a high throughput screen, a lot of the DMGs were actually susceptible because they had this high expression of, of PLK1. And so you know, drugs like Velocitib will, will across the board treat them. Um, so I think you know, finding that target and finding a company that can actually supply the drugs to actually get into the kids, that, that's the biggest challenge. But how do you envision that uh, the um, Oncoton uh, in bringing the funding gap for the Velocitib clinical trial uh, will be bridging for other future projects and future clinical trials with this drug? Well, I, I definitely. Like the, the first step is to get it into kids and, um, you know, to see if it works. I mean, uh, you know, and the fact that, that you're, you're targeting multiple uh, pediatric cancers with this program, like I think that's a very important thing, um, especially with PLK1 being highly expressed across cancers and and just the, the work that Heidelberg are doing with uh, medulla blastoma, the mcn driven um, cancers there, um, and we're doing with the DIPG. Um, I think it's, yeah, very important. Yeah, um, it's actually uh, answering the questions at the same time, mul answering multiple questions at the same time when we have multiple entities with just one drug. So mm -hmm. it's a um, very uh, great design uh, to use um, in this setting. And also, uh, you are connecting from Sydney. Uh, Ricardo is from uh, US right now. Uh, how is the challenge of having that across the world uh, clinical trial? What are the main obstacles that you face, um, the practical ones for uh, clinicians also? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not a clinician myself. I'm actually a lab based scientist I'm working on the preclinical side of, of the research. But um, just as far as, I mean, since COVID, I'd say it's actually gotten a lot easier because people are used to doing things over Zoom and, you know, we connect regularly with the people in Heidelberg um, to, to have updates. So, um, yeah, I think the, the challenge, it's easier now in, in this day and age, um, but um, really, um, and finding, finding people to share information with and, and to actually really drive research from a collaborative standpoint is really good. 
Yeah, um, thank you for that. And uh, another question for Ricardo. So um, for those uh, who are watching today uh, who, and uh, who have never personally touched by childhood cancer, what is the message or question you would like to convey to them about the importance of supporting pediatric uh, cancer research and initiatives like uh, the Oncotron? Well, I think for the ones uh, that had been that are not tied by child cancer, the ones, you know, I would say, um, well, child cancer is a disease that is killing, um, as far as we know, and at least, you know, the data we have is more than 90,000 kids every year. Um, so it's, I would say, we, we, we've been mentioning this for the for the whole sessions is we're talking about 250 kids and adolescents, they're, they'll, be, they'll be gone by the end of the day because there are no specific drugs um, developed for them. So. Um, I think what we're trying to prove by by building a company specialized on pediatric cancer is like that there is there is a way that we can really change the the situation. And you mentioned something before at the very beginning of the session. It's like you mentioned about well, it's going to take, which is true. You know, literally, it's taking forever to develop drugs for pediatric cancer, and it is very slow compared to the medication. And it's true, but it's slow. It is slow, and it's taking forever not because it's complicated, but it's because of lack of funding. Uh, purely, this is uh, full stop. There is no other reason. Um, so, because in, the truth is that um, developing drugs for pediatric cancer, there is a lot of misconception about this. I mean, it is it is not so complicated as it sounds. Um, normally, you know, we have some many different type of regulatory regulatory pathways that uh, allow us to get our drugs for rare diseases like pediatric cancer approved faster. You know, there are different type of mechanisms. Um, there are many incentives for companies developing drugs for pediatric cancer so to help us just make our uh, profit and loss, our balance more profitable and get more resources to develop more drugs. Um, but also, I would say, um, you know, there is also the opportunity to run trials uh, and build clinical trials with not so much money compared to adult medication. I mean, if you would like to set up a, dry, a trial for an adult cancer drug, you would need probably millions of dollars. Um, and probably you would need to enroll hundreds of thousands of patients, right? And go up to phase three. Well, in pediatric cancer is different. Uh, you can run a trial with a few uh, number of patients. Well, unfortunately, because there's no so much options and because it's a very rare disease, right? Um, but we're talking about enrolling patients, you know, in the number of uh, 50, 60, 70, 100. For instance, you know, the, the clinical trial we're talking about right now, where we plan to test polarsertive. So I believe we're talking about enrolling maximum 100, 110 patients to test five different type of pediatric indications. So for each indication, we'll be having um, not so much patients like the total. So I think that reduces the cost of a clinical trial and, and literally makes um, um, a very affordable um, adventure uh, that could be done. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, willingness and, you know, um, and support from different and, and institutions in to provide the necessary funds that we need to run these trials. But it is, it is easier uh, and cheaper, way cheaper, to run a trial for pediatric indication and with a little bit, just a tiny fraction of what is dedicated to support and develop drugs for adult medication, you could get a drug approved for pediatric cancer faster, cheaper, and quicker. Yeah, you're right. Um, I always, uh, I always encounter the feeling that uh, from regulatory uh, institutions and also from uh, some part of industry that uh, when you speak about the pediatric cancer, they say, yeah, you have a very little number of patients, so we are not interested there. But they are patients, right? They are people, and they have families, and uh, it is very important to uh, highlight that uh, even if we have a uh, low number of patients with this trial we can have uh, we can answer a lot of questions a lot of entities are involved uh, and um, it will uh, cover i could say the whole pediatric uh, cancer spectrum so uh, it's uh, really important to um, emphasize that um, part and um, another um, kind of uh, motivational question for benjamin uh, how you decided to become a scientist and um, work uh, in the scientific field 
Oh, that's a long question. I'm getting a bit old for that. Um, <laughs> the, um, look, I've always been interested in science, and what what actually drew me to paediatric uh, brain cancer in particular is is this so much that's not known um, and it's, that makes it so much i mean it's it's purely from a scientist's point of view like it makes it a very interesting field to study and the fact that, that you can identify something completely new and um, investigate um, things that just are unknown that's what's sort of inspiring um, yeah yeah, that's uh, correct. I, I remember that uh, I always, uh, when I was writing some motivational letters to apply for, for some programs, I always writing that I would like uh, to know as much pathophysiology, biology, and uh, as cancer cells do, because they mm. they are really clever and they uh, know how to invade a lot of mechaniz mechanisms. So. Yeah. Uh, mm, just um, working in the scientific field, it uh, is uh, very interesting. And uh, also you always have the inspiration and the enthusiasm to understand, okay, what this cell wants from me, we want to understand. Uh, yeah, uh, another uh, question that I wanted to, uh, to uh, ask to Ricardo uh, regarding the collaboration with uh, Heidelberg and uh, what uh, from the industry part, how is the collaboration built um, across the board? So uh, you are the industry uh, for people who just uh, not in the pediatric oncology field or not in the industry field. Uh, they want to know how you collaborate with the hospitals and how is that collaboration built? Well, in that case, uh, we, we connected uh, with Heidelberg on, on, on the entire group, um, including, of course, Australia, uh, because um, they were aware that we were, uh, we were we licensed the rights of Velocity, which is a drug that was initially developed by a big pharma company, Ingehund, uh, Boringer Ingehund for uh, adult leukemia. So, during several years, the drug was uh, studied by different groups, um, and it showed up um, a, an interest and potential for treating different types of pediatric cancer. So, when our company in Coquitos, um got um, light, you know, got the, the control on 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 the on the on the drug, then we've been approached by Heidelberg um, um, because they show us a lot of interest um, based on preclinical data um, that would justify. The launch of a trial specifically to test velocity, you know, the compounding different indications. So, and because this is our mission, we were very excited. So, you know, I think this is one of the best calls that we can ever have. You know, the experts, the clinicians calling us and saying, you know, we are very interested in your drug because we think your drug could could be used to treat different types of pediatric cancer. So, I guess because this is 100% our mission. Uh, so on the collaboration, I think it's it's very and it was very easy and it's been very easy from the very beginning. So we wanted to we said yes from the very beginning. We wanted to get on board, and we wanted to do our best to support the effort. So um, our company will provide the drug uh, at no cost. Uh, so that's kind of our main commitment, and and we want to raise additional funds because we need to cover the cost of the shipment uh, and labeling, and also we need to provide uh, some funds to the sites so that they can just uh, cover the cost of the of the trial uh, so we're doing um as much we're doing different efforts to raise these funds um one of those is the oncothon uh, because we're going to get the, the 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 funding ready to to initiate the trial as soon as possible but but i think the the collaboration is so so easy i mean um, i mean for me it's the first time in the industry because i come from another industry but i, I never I, I do inspect that that would be so easier to work with um uh, the academics and the experts um in a way we are both in the same both uh, we're both motivated and we're just moved by the same mission. So, uh, I mean, it would be probably different with a company that is thinking about other uh, type of markets. But in our case, I mean, there's nothing else we're doing here except for uh, focusing on pediatric cancer. Yeah. And uh, j uh, a quick question, where uh, does uh, Velocity come from? Yeah, Velocity comes from, um, again, I think I think you mentioned it before, it's, uh, this is a... Um, drug uh, compound that was developed by Beringer Ingelheim, um, the German um, pharma company. They were developing, developing velocity for adult leukemia. Uh, it went to up phase three, um, um, but the company decided to uh, finally discontinue the compound for, um, uh, for strategic reasons. Uh, but during uh, the time that uh, Beringer was developing the compound for adult indication, there were different groups of um, pediatric cancer experts from all around the world 
working and testing the compound for different type of periodic indications. And, and they generated very interesting pre-chemical data um, that suggested that the drug could be uh, a potential uh, new therapy for different type of sarcomas and brain cancer mainly. So um, uh, unfortunately, because um, uh, we're talking about a pediatric indication, so uh, by then, uh, Boringer was not, was not interested in pursuing pediatric indication, so the drug was shelved and the program was shut down for, for uh, a period of time uh, until, uh, you know, there was a company out there uh, specialized in pediatric cancer, you know, that was on computers, and then we were um, connected to Boeing Gear, and it was a very smooth um, conversation, to be honest, and then they were very open and very willing to help and to provide the drug to Uncle Kiro so that we could just move forward and try to get this drug to patients. So that was the story of how we uh, ended up by uh, bringing Valasa deep into our portfolio. Yeah, that's uh, very nice. And uh, could you uh, uh, share also the, a little bit information about the sites, the countries that are going to be involved? Um, how many sites we have? How many countries? Yeah, I um, we're talking about uh, 20 sites approximately, um, uh, 20 sites in different countries in Europe, um, UK and Australia. Um, and we're talking about um, the the size of the trial will be, we're talking about five different arms. Um, and we're talking about a hundred patients, uh, more or less. So maybe, maybe Ben, you have more information that you want to just jump in, uh, chime in because you guys are more on, on, this, on the scientific side. Yeah, I mean, obviously we, one of the sites we're run by uh, Professor David Ziegler, who's my boss um, here, uh, specifically looking at uh, DRPG and effective velocitib um, with radiotherapy, which is a standard for DRPG. And, and unfortunately, radiotherapy by itself, it doesn't, it doesn't cure DRPG and only prolongs a little bit um, because the tumors do bounce back. Um, and so, but one thing that radiotherapy does, which is why we're interested in velocitib is because it opens out the blood brain barrier for that, that period of time so that the drugs can get into the brain and, you know, get in at a, a decent concentration. Which I think is the second arm of the study, which is uh, more to do with the Heidelberg group and medulla blastoma, but but they're using it with um, uh, vinorelbin, which is the partner drug, um, and the vinorelbin is an interesting compound as well because it can actually um, open out the blood-brain barrier further. And with DMG or DIPG, that's particularly important because we know that DIPG actually close off the blood-brain barrier. So having a, a partner drug there, where you can not, uh, not only um, target the tumor, but you can also open out the blood-brain barrier. Um, for further further drugs to get in there, it just it it's an added benefit to us, and so that's that's why we're interested in you know doing the clinical trial with with DMG. Yeah, uh, just uh, I was wondering, what do you think about also uh, an ultrasound bubbles that also op open the blood brain barrier? It's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's used it's, also the, in this uh, setting. Yeah, yeah, no, it's actually, yeah, actually a focus of another researcher within our group, you know, to actually get that into the clinic as well. Um, yeah, it's a possibility. Um, and we're looking at um, disrupting the, the blood brain barrier in other ways, using other compounds that target the endothelial uh, barrier and see if we can actually, yeah, increase penetration. And that's that's a key for with, with um, DMG. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's a very devastating disease and uh, we need action. Uh, we should uh, act very fast because we don't have time in, uh, in especially in DIPG for patients. Yeah, yeah. No, that's one thing we, we actually get feedback from parents um, that the fact that, you know, they've got a child who suddenly gets DMG and, and there's not a long time to do anything, but everything takes so long. Just, you know, the, the, the fact that you've got to do the analysis, you've got to do the workup, you've got to do okay, this drug's good for you, let's get it into you. And, and by that stage, it's just, a lot of the time, it's just too late, you know? So yeah, timing is, is imperative. Yeah. yeah, apart from the research perspective, also, if you are working in a low middle income country, you don't have access to uh, the basic medications, the essential ones, and it also mm. delays uh, the, um, yeah, the treatment. So we need action and we should uh, work fast. So I think that Oncoton is uh, one step forward uh, mm -hmm. so that after Oncoton, when we raise funds, we can launch uh, the trial and we can uh, have a lot of answers to our questions. Um, I wanted to thank you both uh, for this session. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you, Ricardo, and thank you, Ben. Um, 
thank you for your inspirational uh, thoughts and uh, your insights, uh, your perspectives. Uh, I just want to remind the audience that if you have questions, you can put it in the chat. And uh, also, uh, you can write down uh, from uh, which country are you connected? Uh, do you have some connections with uh, childhood cancer? And uh, we can answer that questions as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, again, I would like to challenge everyone. Uh, let's uh, make difference together and let's make this event an extraordinary one uh, so that uh, afterwards we can uh, have, uh, we can save a lot of lives in pediatric oncology. Uh, thank you very much both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you.